in Jesus' name. We're going to read from Jeremiah chapter 1, and we're going to read the first, well, not the first. We're going to read from verse 6 to 10, and then we're going to jump to Luke chapter 10, and we're going to read 17 to 19. So Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 6 says, Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But then, but the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Luke chapter 10 Verse 17 says, 17 to 19, And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject to us through thy name. But he said unto them, I beheld Satan as, a light, as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Behold, I give unto you power. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And as you're seated, why don't you tell your neighbor, I've got Holy Ghost power. It sounds like three people believe that. Tell your other neighbor, maybe your other neighbor believes, say, I've got Holy Ghost power. Probably the neighbor behind you will believe, say, I've got Holy Ghost power. And saints, let me tell you, it doesn't have to feel like you have Holy Ghost power to know and believe that you have Holy Ghost power. The Word said it. Power and power dynamics are at play in every facet of life. So it shouldn't surprise us when we see power dynamics in our homes. Between couples and men and women have power dynamics. Children and their parents have power dynamics. There are power dynamics on the job. There's upper management, middle management, employees. And there are all these dynamics that exist there. And there are even power dynamics in the church. There is authority. There is different levels of operation. And there are power dynamics that exist in every facet of life life. So it seems to me that power and power dynamics is a God idea. Because in every area of life, we see that there are power dynamics. But just as everything else in the world, everything that God created for his purpose, our flesh and the devil tries to pollute. Our flesh and the devil tries to warp. Our flesh and the devil tries to distort. But there is a power that is higher than any other power. And while the devil fell from heaven, as the scripture denotes, and fell from heaven with power, there is still yet a greater power. And that power is the power that exists in the kingdom of God. And there is power dynamics in the kingdom of God. Here's how it works. There's one king. And he has all power. It's that simple. There is one king. His name is Jesus. And he has all power. 
power. That's how simple God intended power dynamics to be. One king that everybody is subject to. Ephesians 1.19 says it this, this way. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards who be, to, to us ward who believe according to the working of his mighty power. I'm reading verse 20. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Far above. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but in that which is to come. So I'm sorry to say the White House has a name, but no power. Not like the power that's in the kingdom. Wealthy men may have names, but there is a king with the power. Now this king that has this power, here's the big revelation. He's in us. This king of glory, this king that every power is subject to, this king uh, that is greater and far above uh, all principalities uh, and powers uh, and dominions uh, and might is in you. So when you tell your neighbor, I've got Holy Ghost power, what you're saying to your neighbor is the king is in me. The king of all kings. I don't think we get it yet, Brother Jermaine. The king that everything is subject to is in us. And has given us power. The king of the universe. Jesus Christ himself. This is why the enemy tries to warp it. Have you ever heard of willpower? Right? Willpower is a real thing. And it's a serious thing, but it's in here. It's, it's all in here. And you can accomplish a lot with willpower. You really can. Because the Bible tells us, read the story of Babel. They had a, they had a will. That they were going to build something. And because they had a will, guess what? They almost accomplished it. I have a lot of willpower. When I tell you sometimes I make up my mind, I'm going to finish this thing. I'm going to accomplish this thing. I'm going to set out and get this thing done. We have willpower. But... One of the translations of power, and I, uh, the reason why I wanted to put out willpower in there is so that we understand where it's coming from. It's coming from us. The first word power in Luke 10 and 19, it says, Luke 10 and 19, behold, I give unto you power. Now that word power that word power, the first one, I give unto you power. It's the power to choose. That's what that power means. That first one. It's like your will. So I give unto you the opportunity to choose. If you're going to go in this power or the king power. I've given you power. Your will, your choice can enable you to accomplish a lot of things. But we have to remember Jesus in Gethsemane. What did he say? Not my will. Not the power that's in my strength. Not what I have in the tank. Not what I can endure on my own. Not my will. Will, because Calvary 
could not be birthed through willpower. What was done on the cross could not be contained just by the strength of flesh. What was done for our eternal salvation needed something greater. So Jesus said, not my will, but thy will be done. So it's important to recognize where our source of power lies. Because while we're trying to fight the enemy, if we're fighting him with willpower, we are going to lose every time. Because going back to Luke 19, I give unto you power, power to choose over all the power of the enemy. Now that second power is dunamis. So the enemy, power of the enemy, the enemy is fighting us with spiritual power. So if we think we can resist the enemy of our souls based on power in our flesh, if we think we can resist the plans of the enemy with our will, he's coming at us with dunamis. Dynamite power is what he's coming at us with. So if we think we're going to be able to square off with the enemy in our flesh, we're going to end up losing every single time. Dunamis. Strength power. This is where the enemy is fighting us. And we're wondering why we're having struggles to overcome. It's because we're fighting the enemy, not on his terms, but on ours. It's because we're fighting in our flesh. Now, dunamis is the same word that's translated in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But ye shall receive power. But he shall receive what? Power. power. And that power is again dunamis. It's strength power. It's anointed power. It's king power. So God in heaven knows that that's how the enemy is going to fight us. He's going to fight us with supernatural power. So he's given unto each and every one of us power. The same power that's in the Holy Ghost. So I'm like, God, what's that? what does this mean? I've given you power in the spirit. But I've also given you the power of choice. Isn't God kind? So we get to choose if we want to operate in our flesh. That's fine. We get to choose that. Or if we want to fight in the spirit. If we want to war over our souls in the spirit. So I've given you access to power that transcends this earth. And I've endued you with power to override the power of the enemy. But we, God's people, and if we're honest with ourselves... We've been choosing willpower. Thinking that we can accomplish much by ourselves. Thinking that we have what it takes to overcome. Fooling ourselves like looking in a glass and forgetting our reflection that we are strong enough to overcome the wicked one. But I have very sad news. You don't. Unless we are in the power of the Holy Ghost. Unless we are tapped into the source that is higher than any power, any principality, any dominion or might. We cannot win. I remember a few years ago, I don't know if you, anyone else remembers. Sister Margaret cheered with us. A similar thing 
And she came up here and she said, I am not inferior to you. Because she got the revelation that the king of glory, the king of all power, is inside. The king of all power. So that pornography that, that feels like it's overtaking you, you steer that thing in the face and you say, I am not inferior to you. Those sexual sins that no one else knows, you steer it in the face and say, I am not inferior to you. Anxiety and depression, you tell it to the face. I am not inferior to you because I have the king of glory. I have the Holy Ghost and fire. I have the power to overcome and when you have this revelation, no devil in hell can make you buckle. Why? Because you're not inferior. Lust cannot have any power over you because you're not inferior. Apathy towards the church cannot overcome you because you are not inferior. You have power. And this is why the enemy tries to get us to war in our flesh. Because if we ever get the understanding that we're wrestling not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places, and it just goes up and up and up, but we have a king living on the inside of every Holy Ghost filled believer. That king that has endowed us with dunamis power. Acts chapter 10 verse 38 said it like this. Just in case we think we don't need the power of the Holy Ghost. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. That's the same word, dunamis. Who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. The assurance that God is with you, the assurance that God is with you is if you have power to overcome. That's it. If you have power to overcome, then you can be assured that you have the Holy Ghost. In the very same way that Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power, it's the same way God wants to give us access to this kingdom power. And this is why we cannot afford to have, and I'm going to talk to our young people and our parents, we cannot afford not to have the Holy Ghost. And we cannot afford to be unsure whether or not our kids have the Holy Ghost. We cannot afford to be wondering when is the last time they prayed through we can't afford that because I don't know about anyone else. And maybe you guys were just super saved. But you see, when I was 12 and 13, I was in sin. Real sin. Real, real sin. So if you're looking at your 12 and 13 year old thinking that we have time. They can get it together eventually. I was in sin at 12 and 13 years old. So I don't know how saved you guys were. God bless you if you were. But I know I was deep in sin. Puberty. Navigating puberty and adolescence in school is a recipe for sin. I'm going to tell them. Sorry, I'm going to tell them. It's the truth. Because I remember I was there. 
And I'm not going to fool myself to think I wasn't. Navigating puberty in school is dangerous. You know how many things I did in school? <laughs> and my parents, they don't know. That's why parents, elders, that's why people of God, we have to ensure that our kids have the Holy Ghost for real. We have to ensure that they are on fire. Because when we send them off, we're sending them into hell to fight on their own. That's why you have to pray over your kids. That's why you have to ensure that you bring them to these altars and pray the name of Jesus over them. Pray the baptism of the Holy Ghost over them. Pray, pray, pray. Because that's the only way they'll have power to overcome. Only by the strength of the Holy Ghost. We cannot overcome darkness. Without it. Jeremiah said it this way. Just in case we don't think that we have access. Jeremiah 1 verse 6 tells us that as a generation. He was speaking to Jeremiah. But I took this word on. I took it on to myself. He said, I have set you Right now, in this time, in 2024, this generation has been set. Has anyone ever set a table? When you set a table, you spread out the tablecloth, make sure it's even on every side. Then you get out the, the finest china that you bought from Macy's, and then you put it out. With the chargers and the knives and the forks and the, the napkins and the napkin rings and all of the things. It's very intentional when you set something. When you set something, it's a preconceived thought. You know exactly where you want to put it. You know exactly what you want to put out. Pastor said it last week. We were not in biblical times for a reason. So what that means, young people, is that you are set in New York City, in the belly of the beast. You are set in this generation with all the onslaught of the enemy coming against you. You are set and positioned to do what? To root out. So everything the enemy tries to plant in our churches, guess what, Sarah Gale? You've been set to root it out. Everything that the enemy tries to do to oppose the kingdom of God, you have been set to root it out and to destroy. You have also been set to build and to plant. So you see, all the things that Bishop couldn't accomplish, Brother Nick, it's for you. You've been set for it. All the things that Brother Bertram won't accomplish, Spencer, it's because you are set in the kingdom for such a time as this. Don't believe any lie of the enemy. If you have the Holy Ghost and you have the Holy Ghost for real, you have power to overcome. That's what the word says. I write unto you, young men, because the word of God is in you and what you have overcome the wicked one. The enemy is he, he's wicked and he doesn't like us. That's why we cannot fight him in our flesh. That's why we cannot afford to fight him in no play, play, fight. We have to be willing to war in the spirit. 
War for your purity. War for your mind. War for your future. War for your destiny. War for your homes. We have to be willing to roll up our sleeves. Matoko Shama. When you approach the enemy in the power of the spirit, you best believe he backs up. When you step in front of the enemy with your sleeves rolled up in the Holy Ghost, you better believe he's afraid of you, Jessica. He's afraid of what an anointed Jessica can do in his kingdom. He's afraid of what Selena will do when she recognizes that the king of glory resides on the inside of her. Hallelujah. Ask Jehu. Jehu can tell you. Because the things that Elijah couldn't do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Elijah did many things. The man called on fire. My God. But Jezebel, he couldn't get a hold of that one. But God set Jehu. My God. God set Jehu. God set Jehu. Because he knew Jehu was going to help to reestablish what God had preordained. You are set, young people. You are set in this generation for a purpose to reestablish the kingdom of heaven. That's why we're preaching about the king. Because it's the kingdom of heaven that we're reestablishing. You will wreck this world if we ever, Sister Cheryl, if we get the understanding that it's Jesus Christ, the all-powerful God. When this hit me, I'm like, my God, every time I see something happening, I want to cower in fear. And every time I don't understand, I'm like, Jesus, help me, Jesus. It hit me. I'm like, Jesus resides inside of me. The same one that I'm saying, help me. He's saying the help is in you. So because I have this power, I can look at my mountain and I can say, be thou removed. Because the Holy Ghost is inside of me. It doesn't mean my problems disappear overnight. It doesn't mean I have no more struggle. But it means I can look at my problem and say, I am not inferior to you. Back up. It means I can look at that situation and say, the devil is a liar. I have power. Strength power. Dunamis. That battle in your mind. Steer it off in the face and say, This mind belongs to the Lord. This body belongs to the Lord. My children belong to the Lord. My wife, my husband, everything in my life belongs to the Lord. And you're not going to have any ounce of it, devil. Back up. We become so sophisticated and cute, and then we are just messing around with the enemy of our souls. He don't like you. Stop fighting nice. We gotta fight dirty because he don't like you. Scratch him in the face if you must. You gotta fight dirty. My God, trying to stay above the belt, trying to be all cute and pristine when the enemy is coming at us in some secret places, really cutting after our souls. We got to get radical and recognize that we have power and not just power, power over all the 
the power of the enemy. So that scorpion in your life, you have power over it. That serpent in your life, you have power over it. That sickness in your life, you have power over it. You have power. You have power. You have power. You have power. I'm going to say it until we really believe it. You have power. Holy Ghost, anointed, apostolic, Jesus name, the blood of Jesus, power. That's what we have inside of us. Our God ain't no weakling. My God, he's the king of the universe. He's no weak man. He's the king. So when I look at that situation in my family, when I look at that situation in my bank account, when I look at that situation over my children, I'm going to say, I got power. I told you when I got this revelation, I got a pep in my step. My chin got up, my chest was out, and all of a sudden, I recognized who was inside of me. My God, living below our privilege, when we have the King of Glory. It's all right. You can thank God for the power. The enemy has held some of us down for a very long time. The songwriter said I wanted to go, but he wouldn't let me go. Now I'm free because I have power. Now I'm free because I recognize that Jesus is on the inside. I'm not going to succumb to the plans of the enemy. When God has set me, that's what he said. Set me in this generation. Set me in this time. The issues I'm facing in my life, God has sent me to deal with it. It's, it's either he's all powerful and all knowing, and he's very purposeful and intricate with our lives, or he's not. It's either one or the other. So if God knew, Isaiah, that you needed to be at that school, where that girl comes up to you every day and rubs your head and say, hi, Isaiah. If God knew that you didn't have any choice but to fall to that, he wouldn't have put you there. But he put you there because there is power on the inside. You know, we, we preach it well that the there is no sin that's taken you then that is common, right? And that in every sin, God makes a way of escape. But God truly makes a way of escape. Like, I don't know, okay, maybe it's just me. There are times when I'm about to say the wrong thing and I get a phone call. I'm like, that can't be coincidence. I'm just about to say the wrong thing and I get a phone call. Or I'm about to do something, and then so, something just happens. And every time it happens, I'm like, God, escape. you've given me a way of escape. You've given me a way to resist. Why? Because there's power inside of us that God will not let get diluted. Listen, and I'm, I'm closing. Power comes at a price, though. And I know this generation doesn't like this, but it is the truth. And I'm a part of this generation. I don't like it either. But it's the truth. Power comes at a price. Because for the person of Jesus to be glorified, his flesh had to be crucified. 
power always comes at a price. What are you willing to pay to get what you want to get from God? It's, it's, I can't make it any simpler. Genesis chapter 32 and 28 said, And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince has thou power with God and with men and has prevailed. Jacob experienced power with God, but it cost him being disfigured. It cost him changing his identity. It cost him his all. And he may have been limping away from that spot, but he now had power with God. He may have been disfigured and unrecognizable, but he was now going in the power of the Holy Ghost. Power with God cost everything. Sometimes I'm like, God, it can't cost most things. Can I have this part of my life to just like deal with this myself? But to have power with God and with men. Because you can have power with men. But to have power with God and with men, it comes at a high price. So ultimately to lay hold on what God has anointed you for will take a wrestling. I like to call it a dealing with God. <laughs> That's how I term it in my little brain. That me and God are dealing. Because he's like, I want this. And I'm going to give you this. But I want this. And give me some more of this. And I'll give you a little bit more of this. But if you take some more of this out of you, then I'll give you some. That's the right. And it sounds simple. But it's, 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 a, it's a pain in your flesh. It's a pain in your flesh to have that dealing and that transaction with God. Where it's saying, I want more of your pride. So that means I'm going to embarrass you. We don't want to hear it. I want more of your will. So that means I'm going to give you more of destiny. I, I, I want more of, of your time. So that may mean you get laid off. We don't want to hear it. But to have power with God comes at a cost. And if we aren't willing to pay the cost, see people and leave them alone. Because if I'm not willing to pay the cost that Sarah Gale pays, I, sh I don't want to sing like her. Because I don't know the price she had to pay in consecration for what she can do in the spirit. When you see Brother Davian pray, and you want to pray like Brother Damien, better be ready and willing to say, Davian, what did you have to give up? What did you have to transact with the Lord to get to that place where you can pray like that? We you see Brother Bertram get up here and he preaches under the anointing. Don't envy him unless you are willing to pay the price. Because power, real, Holy Ghost, unfiltered power comes at a high price. And it's not an easy pill to swallow, but it needs to be said. So when you're evaluating your life, when you are evaluating where you are, you say, God, 
I don't know if I'm willing. Be real. Because it's going to hit you. It's going to hit you. So power comes at a price. And that price is consecration. A surrendering to God. Luke 4 verse 14 reads like this. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through the region around about. Jesus himself, 40 days and 40 nights, transacting with his flesh. Putting down his flesh. Submitting his will. So that he can have dunamis. To do the miracles that we saw in scripture. It came at a price. I was just telling Sister Sarah Gale. And I, I, I appreciate you Brother Bertram for mentioning it. This young lady... She did something, at, something happened at HYC. And you just had to be there to understand what happened. And I had to tell her, I'm like, Sarah Gale, you transitioned from a place of, I got talent, because we know she's talented. But she was in a dimension that was far beyond her talent can do. Uh, I'm telling you, I feel it in the Holy Ghost because I was there. And if you were there, you would just be like, this is not our little Sarah Gale. She was anointed by the Holy Ghost. But I know that came at a price. Because power doesn't just happen overnight. I know it came at a price. And I had to encourage her. I said, Sarah Gale, this is not much of an encouragement, but it's all I have. You're going to have to die more. That was, I, I wish I could tell her, man, pat her on the back and just have her sail. But I had to tell her the real. And the real is, if she wants to stay there and go higher, she has to die more. Her will, her plans, her dreams, her lifestyle, everything that God requires has to die for her to live in that place. So when you see consecration produce power, remember there was a price. And we have to count the cost. Power counts the cost. Philippians 3 verse 7 says, But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for who I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. And here it is. That I, you can't do all of this, that I may know him. And the dunamis of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his sufferings. Be made conformable unto his death. That's what it takes. That's what it took for you to have the Holy Ghost. Death. So if you are going to have the power of God, 
in your life in operation, that's the formula. Being conformed to his image means dead. Dead to self. Dead to dreams. Dead to hopes that you had to accomplish this and do that and go there. When God said, no, I want you right here. That's the price of power. And here's the last thing I want to share. The price of not having power is also too great a price to pay. So, to have power with God, you have to pay the price. To not have power with God, you pay a big price. So, it goes back to him giving us power to choose. <laughs> we choose our will, okay, but there's a price. Or we choose his will, and there's still a price. Acts chapter 19, verse 11 says, And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. And we preach this all the time, sons of Sceva, we talk about it, right? But this thing stood out to me as I read it. So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and diseases departed from them and evil spirits went out of them. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them a call over them which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus and Jesus whom Paul preacheth. And there were seven sons of, sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? This is the verse. And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them. And this part stood out to me, the last clause so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. Could it be, Brother Davian, that many of our people are leaving the house exposed, wounded, because they really didn't have power with God? God, they left because of church hurt, wounded, because the Holy Ghost that was in operation really didn't give them power with God. They were exposed in sin and folly because they really didn't have the real deal. And that's why, young people, you can't afford to fake it. You cannot afford to fake it for the sake of your parents, for the sake of any name, for the sake of anything. You simply just can't afford to fake it. If you need God, just come to the altar. He's going to, he will show up. You come and you come and you come and you come. And I promise you, he will show up. You cannot afford to fake it because this is what happened. Leap. The spirit leaped on them. My God. Many people are sitting maybe beside us. Right at the edge. Of leaving wounded. Because they just need some strength power. My God. They just need some dunamis. They just need God to do a work. That's why we can't afford to play games. And that's why I'm inviting all of our young people. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, or you don't know the last time you spoke in tongues, come to the altar. If you do have the Holy Ghost, 
But you just need the strength power of God in your life. And you know what you're facing. You know what you're battling. Come to the altar. If you know that where God has you is requiring a lot for you to give up. And you just don't know if you have the strength to make it or to give it up. Come to the altar. And if you need the Holy Ghost, because you're in this world, maybe you don't come to this church, but you need the Holy Ghost to overcome whatever it is you're facing in your life, because you definitely do. I'm going to also invite you to come to this altar. And while they come, I'm going to invite everyone to stand. I'm going to invite you to stand. And young people, remember, we don't have time to play games. Do you know where you are? And as we said, at the end of it all, hallelujah, not having power with God is actually too great a price to pay. There is no faking it till you make it with Jesus. You just have to mean God and mean him. Hallelujah.